at the time of the divorce, I was very uh, concerned that they were not going to get what they needed, either spiritually or emotionally, because they no longer now had two parents uh, working together in the family unit, giving them the same values. And this was a real concern for me. Also, um, the year after my uh, divorce, uh, my son had uh, disciplinary problems in school. And even though he had other um, classmates that were from divorced families, uh, he had told me on a number of occasions that he never thought that his parents would ever divorce. And I knew that this really impacted him and how he felt uh, going to school and having to tell other kids that he, that he was now from a divorced family. I found it really difficult uh, because I think the children are the innocent victims in a separation or a divorce. And um, their whole world is mom and dad and their family. And their world is shattered when daddy walks out. I had a, I had a problem with, um, or I felt bad about when I you know, had the children every weekend. And then uh, I, we had a great time and I would, I would bring them home again, you know? And it, it, to me it felt like I was turning in rental equipment. <laughs> you know, it was kind of like, hey, the kid, you know, as long as the kids were in good shape and you know, uh, the, you know, the bills were paid and everything like that, that I got to check them out the next weekend, so. Um, they were, there were some issues involved there where they were very upset about what was going on with their father. And I was trying not to be too negative, trying not to say too much about it. Um, but there, there was a time when we did have to address these issues. And they were, as I said, grown children, so it was a little easier to talk to them ab about, you know, these issues. Um, but there were repercussions with all of them. And knowing that so many things that you protect your children from, you know, don't drink caffeine, oh, that's not good for you, this, that, the other. And now I have to send them out in a world that I don't want them to be in. So I think the first thing that's really essential is honestly coming to grips with one's own sense of disappointment, uh, anger, and hurt. The really challenging part is that by yourself divorce is difficult. Having to go through it at the same time you're responsible for three children, or any children, any n number of kids, is makes it even harder because you have to do, have to deal with yourself and you have to take on that responsibility and burden to help your kids as well. I think the hardest part as far as the kids was my grandson um, who had lived with us for from the time he was born and just feeling like my my decisions the actions I was compelled to make and still believe were the right things to do, but that that was going to be the way that he was going to have to learn about divorce and about all the, the pain and suffering that comes with it. Not that he's going to understand it at four years old, but it's going to affect his whole life, and I just hated that I had to be the one to break that to him. In an effort to keep stability in their life, I kept them in the same school, I kept them in the same church, the same parish church, in the same Sunday school, and I stayed and lived in the same home. And this helped to create a sense of stability in their life, and I really think all of that benefited them um, and helped them uh, over the ensuing years so that now they're doing much better. The more you can remove change, moving forward for them, the more they'll be able to settle into this new life because it's predictable for them. So I think that's first and foremost. And there's several ways you can do that. One is be available to them, especially for dads who, who many times don't have the kids, uh, don't have custody of the children. That's hard for them to do. My advice to them would be, you change your schedule don't make them change theirs. You do whatever you need to do to be as active a part of their life as predictably as you can. If you're supposed to be with the kids every Wednesday, move heaven and earth to be with them every Wednesday because whether you realize or not, they are looking forward to that greatly. And it, 
you know, it may be easy for you to, to, to call up and just have to change it because you've got a conflict, but it's not easy for them to make that change. I think, you know, I read a lot of books on divorce and I talked to a lot of people who had been through divorce or were adult children of divorce. And so I kind of educated myself on divorce and children so that I could do a good job with my children. And um, one of the really important things to me um, was that I did not discuss the intimate details of my marriage or my relationship and my separation with my husband. I didn't discuss it with the children. I think that's inappropriate to do. Um, you know, they don't need to know the blow-by-blow -blow details, especially when they're young. Uh, so I was careful to be honest with them and open with them, but not to tell them too much. It's very important also that we realize that kids have antenna and they can understand um, how we are thinking and feeling sometimes when we're not aware of it. And that any of those areas that are unresolved in us are likely to be picked up by our kids. I think we have to be very aware that even small comments um, that are negative about the other parent can be very destructive because after all, no matter what the children think about the situation, they love both parents. Even if they're very angry at uh, one person, there still is that yearning to be with them. So I think it's extremely important to be very aware that it never serves a child well to say negative things about the, the other parent and even subtle kinds of things. It's very easy to say, to you know, or think when um, you hear people of putting, you know, doing nasty things during a divorce and it, taking it out on the kids and using the kids as pawns. You don't understand those emotions until you've been there because it's difficult. It would be easy to use your kids to spite your spouse. And you have to put your money where your mouth is and not do it. You don't, there's lines you don't cross and you don't do it. I love my kids more than I love my wanting revenge or whatever it is to, you know, get back at him. And the biggest gift that I can give them right now is the gift of their father. And I have to give it to them. At this point, what you really want to do is um, show your child how much you love him or her, uh, but also how important it is that that child find ways to love their father, or love their mother, um, and to pray for, uh, for their father and mother that, that uh, this will be a time that both of them uh, can grow stronger and, and closer together. Another thing that we did that I think is really different is, uh, as far as custody goes, we did nesting. And I had read about that in a book, and uh, what that means is that the mom and dad come and go from the house while the children remain living in their home. And my children had lived in the same house their whole lives, and I didn't want them to have to start over in an apartment. I wanted them to have the security of their own rooms and their own beds. And so my husband shared the week and he spent part of the week with them and I spent part of the week with them, but always in our home. I started, I started to uh, feel really bad on Sunday nights and, I, and I, then I hit the work thing the next day and then I, I just felt I need something positive on that because I'd go out and have, a, have dinner by myself after I'd turn the kids in or have a couple drinks and, I'd, and I would feel, I'd say, this isn't, this isn't the way I want us to go. So I called up to church and asked, listen, can I, can I pick up an adoration at 2 a.m. or 1 a.m.? that next night, which, which, which would be if I dropped them off at six, it would be two o'clock the next, you know, five hours or seven hours, whatever the difference later. And that was a positive. So it's like I had a great weekend and then all of a sudden, you know, then you're able to say, okay, I've got something else to look forward to. My, my good things have not ended when I turned the children in. Faith, prayer. Um attending mass together, keeping that a key part of your routine, letting them know that you don't have all the answers, that God is there to help you even though you can't see him and just just turning the problem, the uncertainty, the fear, the anxiety, the anger, 
just really just giving it to him, not really knowing how he's going to resolve it or, or, or what's going to happen, but just that act of faith and praying with them together every night. Let them see that you don't always have the answer, that you're you're trusting God just as much as you're asking them to trust in God. It's so hard to convince people sometimes that the best way that they can help their kids is to, is to heal themselves. I met with an extremely wise woman who kind of slapped me upside the head and said, you're more than just a wife, you're a mother, and you need to do that and you need to do that well. And I think you have to expect that there's gonna be disappointments that continue. I have a son, every Father's Day, it hurts. Every Christmas we're not together with the family, it hurts. So you have to anticipate that it's not gonna stop hurting, that it does continue. Um, but I also think you need to look at what's great. I have, I have a wonderful son out of my marriage. Um, that I was at the age of 39, not expecting a family. But I am so, so blessed with this wonderful child. And he's my life. You can't keep that anger inside of you. You have to let it go if you want to move on. And they saw that in me, moving on, taking all these steps, doing all these things I had never done before. And they said, oh, well, I guess mom's all right now, or at least heading that way, so I don't have to worry about her anymore.